हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ मिस्टर वाई वाई कामरे असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर मेक इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट शरद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड रॉ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द गियर ट्रेंस दिस इज व्हाट यूनिट नंबर थर्ड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द गियर ट्रेंस इन अर्लियर वीडियो वी सीन द यूनिट नंबर सेकेंड दैट इज टूथ व्हील्स और टूथ गियर्स ओके ऑलरेडी वी सीन द गियर्स एंड वॉट इज द यूज ऑफ गियर्स टाइप्स ऑफ गियर्स अगेन वी आर सो वी आर सीन द डेरेवेशन एंड न्यूमरिकल्स रिलेटेड टू गियर्स नाउ टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द गियर ट्रेंस ओके सो लेट सी वी वी सी द गियर ट्रेंस फर्स्ट थिंग इज आर इंट्रोडक्शन वॉट इज मीन बाय अ गियर ट्रेंस समटाइम्स टू और मोर गियर्स आर मेड टू मैच विद ईच ऑदर टू ट्रांसमिट पावर फ्रॉम वन शार्प टू अनदर दैट इज वॉट first thing is that why we use the gears the to transfer motion or power from one shaft to another shaft here two or more gears are made to mesh that means here more than two gears are two or more gears are used to transfer motion from one shaft to another shaft that is what the gear train such a combination is called gear train or train of two through wheels that means suppose in previous one to transfer motion these two gears are in mesh with each other ओके सो गियर ट्रेन इज नथिंग बट वॉट मोर देन टू टू और मोर देन टू गियर्स आर मैच विथ इच अदर टू ट्रांसफर मोशन दैट मीन्स वी हैव टू ट्रांसफर मोशन फ्रॉम दिस गियर टू दिस गियर ओके सो दिस इज दिस इज बेस्ट ऑन द शार्प्ट वन दिस इज वॉट शार्प टू एंड दिस इज शार्प थ्री सो दिस इज वॉट रोटेस इन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन दिस इज वॉट एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन एंड दिस इज अगेन क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन लाइक वाइज दैट ओके सो दिस इज वॉट सच अ कॉम्बिनेशन इज कॉल्ड टूथ्र व्हील्स और गियर सॉरी ट्रेन ऑफ टूथ्र व्हील्स और गियर ट्रेन द नेचर ऑफ ट्रेन यूज डिपेंड्स अपॉन द विलोसिटी रेशियो रिक्वायर्ड एंड द रिलेटिव पोजिशन ऑफ द एक्सेस ऑफ शैप दैट मीन्स द नेचर ऑफ द ट्रेन यूज डिपेंड्स अपॉन द विलोसिटी रेशियो दैट मीन्स वॉट इज द विलोसिटी रेशियो वी रिक्वायर्ड द विलोसिटी रेशियो वी रिक्वायर्ड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द विलोसिटी रेशियो वी कैन एडजस्ट द गियर ट्रेन otherwise the relative position of axis of shaft that means the dependent upon the axis of shaft we can make the gear trends or the, as per requirement of velocity ratio we can uh, set the gear trend this is what gear trend nature of the gear trend this is there based on velocity ratio and relative position of the axis of this shaft okay the gear trend may be consist of spur bevel and spiral gears this gear trend is mostly what consist of spur gears bevel gears and spiral gears okay so see here these are the introduction of the gear train okay now we are going to see the types of gear trains then which uh, there are the different types of gear trains will be there so uh, we are going to see the types of gear trains okay so see here the following are the different types of gear trains depending upon the arrangement of the wheel okay so there are the different types of gear trains that is first one is what simple gear train that is what first one is what simple gear train okay now next is what compound gear train third type is what reverted gear train and fourth one is what epicyclic gear train these are the four types of gear trains will be there okay so we will see one by one okay that is what simple gear train compound gear train reverted and epicyclic epicyclic gear train we will see one by one okay so in that one the first three that is what simple gear train compound gear train reverted gear train these first three types of gear trains the axis of shaft over which the gears are mounted are fixed relative to each other that means here what happens that means axis of shaft over which gears are mounted are fixed that means the gears are fixed on this axis okay relative to and relative to each other okay this is what the, in the first three that is our simple gear train compound and re reverted okay and the fourth one that is what but in case of epicyclic gear trains the axis of shaft on which the gears are mounted may move relative to fixed axis that means they will move to relative to the fixed axis and in this case of first three that is simple uh, compound and reverted the relative uh, their their gears are fixed uh, relative to each other and epicyclic in the case of epicyclic gear train they they move on the relative to fixed axis okay this is what the difference between these two okay so we are going to see the simple gear train okay so see here this is what gear train there are gear uh, in this figure figure a figure b and figure c will be there okay so this is what uh, it, this is what this is what a shaft 
okay in this shaft the gear first this driver will be mounted okay and this will be the driven or follower will be there okay so you see here this is what a gear one and this gear two this is what simple gear train that means on one shaft only one gear will be mounted okay so see here this is what a simple gear train that means on this shaft only one this gear will be there on this shaft only this gear will be there okay no more than two gears will be on one shaft only on a single on a single single shaft single gear will be there okay so this is what the second second one in the second one this gear one will be there gear one will be rotated uh, gives the motion to gear two okay and this gear two will be give the motion to gear gear number three or wheel number three okay so this is what driver this last third one will, will be the driven or follower and this the gear number two will be the known as idler gear okay so this is what the idler gear okay now next this figure c in this figure c this first will be the driver this second will be move relative to this gear number one this third will move relative to gear number two and this fourth one that is what driver or driven will be the move relative to gear number three okay so first one is the driver and this fourth one is the driven or follower and this gear number two and three these are known as a idler gear suppose we have to transfer the motion from the this distance may be large okay so this distance may be large so we have to transfer the motion so we have to make the gears of large size okay so this is what is inconvenient that means to make the gears of this larger size this may be inconvenient or the it is what complicated to uh, watch to manufacture gears of large size that means what happens here the structure will be heavy to eliminate that we can make we have to transfer likewise that okay so we can make this gear will be there two simple gears will be there and this one will be likewise that to transfer the motion from this to this that means to transfer motion from this shaft to this shaft we use these two idler gears of idle gears and this gear will be smaller so this one does this structure men uh, this structure may not be heavier related to this one okay so this is the uh, because of that we implemented or we use the gear trains okay so see here when there is only one gear on each shaft it is known as a simple gear train the, these gears are represented by their p circles that means in simple gear train what happens here only one gear on each shaft that means this this shaft in this shaft only one gear will be there on this shaft only this one gear will be there that means and same, same here see here on this shaft only this gear will be there. on this shaft only this gear will be on this shaft this gear will be there that means on single shaft single gear will be there this is nothing but what a simple gear train when the distance between two shaft is small suppose the distance between two shaft is small the two gears one and two are made to mesh with each other and transfer motion from one shaft to another shaft as shown in figure a that means same uh, suppose the distance between two shaft is small then we use the two gears one and two to mesh with each other to transmit the motion from uh, one shaft to another that is what shown in figure one okay suppose the distance is large slightly large since the gear one is driver and gear two is a driven therefore the gear one is called the driver and gear two will be called as a driven or follower okay so it may be noted that the motion of driver gear is opposite to the motion of driving gear so the motion of this suppose this gear will be driver and this is what a driven okay so motion this is what suppose rotate in clockwise direction then this must be in rotates in anti clockwise direction that means the uh, motion will motion of the driver and dif, uh, driven will be different or that means opposite okay and let's see here n1 that is what speed of the gear one that is what driver in rpm n2 that is what speed of gear 2 that is a driven or follower in rpm so t1 that is what number of teeth on gear 1 and t2 that is what number of teeth on gear 2 so since the speed ratio or velocity ratio of gear train is the ratio of the speed of the driver to the speed of the driven or follower okay that means the velocity ratio or speed ratio this is given as this is what a uh, this is given as the ratio of speed of the driver that is what speed of driver gear to the speed of driven or follower and the ratio of speeds of the pair of gear in mesh is the inverse of their number of teeth that is what what they say said the 
रेशो ऑफ स्पीड्स ऑफ पेयर्स ऑफ गियर्स इन अ मेश दैट मीन्स द दिस इज इनवर्स इन द नंबर ऑफ टीथ दैट मीन्स द एन वन बाय एन टू सपोज द गियर विल बी एन वन एंड एन टू दिस विल बी एन वन बाय एन टू इज इक्वल टू सिंपली टी टू बाय टी वन दैट मीन्स द स्पीड्स विल बी इनवर्स इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू नंबर ऑफ टीथ ओके सो सी यर द स्पीड रेशो दैट इज वॉट स्पीड रेशो इज गिवन एज वॉट driver divided by tree one that is n1 by n2 and the speed is what inversely proportional to number of teeth that means comes what comes here this n1 is what inversely proportional to t1 okay this n2 is what inversely proportional to t2 so simply what comes here speed ratio is equal to what driver divided by t1 speed of driver that is n1 speed of driven n2 inversely proportional that is number of of 2 divided by number of teeth of 1 Okay, so speed ratio is what n one divided by n two is equal to t two divided by t one. Okay, it may be noted that ratio of speed of the driver or follower. Sorry, it is may be noted that ratio of speed of the driven or follower to the speed of driver is known as a train value of gear train. That is what this is what a speed ratio. That is what driver divided by driven. And again, there will another concept will be there. That is what train value. And this train value is nothing but what reciprocal of this speed ratio. That means the it is the ratio of speed of the driven gear divided by speed of the driver. So it can mathematically it can be written as train value is equal to what n two divided by n one is equal to t one divided by t two. That means this train value is what exactly reciprocal of this. Speed ratio. Okay, so here is what driver n one divided by n two. N one is what driver n two is what driven. Okay, so this is what the driver divided by driven and train value. This is what driven divided by driver. Okay, so these two terms will be different. Okay, sometimes the distance between two gears is large. Sometimes what happens? The distance between two gears are large. See like so. This is what two small gears will be there. Okay, the distance will be like. That okay. Suppose this will be like that. Okay. Here is what what happens. The distance will be the large. So what in this case what we can use? Okay. So see here the motion from one gear to another gear in such a case may be transmitted by either the following two methods. Okay. Sometimes what happens the distance of between the two uh, gears will be large. The motion from one gear to another uh that is what in case may be transmitted by either using two methods first method is that by providing large size gears first thing is that by providing the large size the gears and second one is what by providing one or two intermediate gears that is what idler gears we already seen okay that is what intermediate gears okay a later consider we show that the former method that is what providing large size gears is very inconvenient and uneconomical method Okay, that is what I already told you that the little consideration that is what providing large size of gear. This is what in can very inconvenient and uneconomical. Okay, so whereas the later method that is what later on we uh, find out the method that is what providing one or more intermediate gear, more gear is very convenient and economical. That means by use the idler gears or we can say this is what a small. gears intermediate gear this, this is what a very in, convenient and economical method okay so we can use this method okay it may be noted that when the number of intermediate gears are odd the motion of the both gears that is what driver and driven okay is like as shown in figure b that means suppose that mean use we odd number of intermediate gears are used suppose so this is what driver gear okay okay this is what intermediate gear and this is what the driven okay this rotates in clockwise direction okay this so suppose this is what this will be meshes with this this will be anti clockwise and this gear 3 will be the with what clockwise that means the gear 1 and gear 3 will rotate in same sense okay and here is what one intermediate gear this one number is what odd number okay so that means if we use the odd number of gears okay intermediate gears then the the motion of this or the sense of the rotation of of the gear one and gear that is what driver gear and driven gear will be same okay suppose we use suppose this is what gear number 1 okay this rotates in clockwise direction this is what a gear number 2 okay this is what uh, now this is suppose this clockwise this anti clockwise okay 
the here gear number 3 will be there this is what clockwise and this gear number 4 that is what uh, suppose this what is the driver this is what again anti clockwise that means the driver will be in clockwise and this will be then anti clockwise okay and here is what gear intermediate gears will be 2 that is what e1 number in the case of e1 number what happens the sense of the driver uh, rotation sense of the rotation of driver and driven will be in opposite direction because we use the intermediate gears of e1 number okay so uh, suppose we have to use here is what odd numbers then what driver and driver uh, gears uh, rotation sense will be the uh, same if we uh, use here what even number of intermediate gears then the sense of rotation of driver and driven will be different but if the number of intermediate gears are even the motion of driver or follower will be the opposite direction of the driven as shown in figure C okay that means we already uh, I explained or I I draw here figure and I will exp I explained uh, that is what the case number two now consider a single uh, simple gear turns of one intermediate gear as shown in figure B so uh, here let n one is what speed of the driver that is what in RPM n two is equal to what speed of intermediate gear in RPM now next is what n three that is speed of dr driven or follower in RPM okay now n1 that is what number of teeth on driver that is what t2 is equal to number of teeth on intermediate gear and t3 is equal to number of teeth on driver driven or follower okay so see here since the dri driving gear 1 is mesh with the intermediate gear 2 therefore the speed ratio of these two gears are that is what r1 by n2 is equal to t2 by t1 this is what a speed ratio that means suppose this figure like that this is a driver gear intermediate gear, gear will be here and this is what a driven okay so this is gear number 1 this is what 2 and this is what 3 okay now speed ratio between these two 1 and 2 that is n1 divided by n2 is equal to t2 by t1 okay next next will be there similarly so what we can say here equation number 1 okay now similarly intermediate gear 2 is in mesh with the driven gear 3 therefore the speed ratio between these two gears that is what speed ratio between these two gears so gear number 1 gear number 2 and gear number 3 this two number will be intermediate so we can find out here this is what n2 divided by n n3 okay so this n2 divided by n3 is equal to what t3 divided by t2 this is what equation number this is what equation number 2 okay now see here the speed ratio of gear train as shown in figure b is obtained by multiplying the equation 1 and 2 that is equation number 1 is what n1 divided by n2 is equal to t2 divided by t1 and equation number 2 that is what n n2 divided by n3 is equal to t3 divided by t t2 okay so we are going to multiply the equation number 1 and 2 so what we get here n1 divided by n2 into n2 divided by n3 is equal to t2 divided by t1 into t3 divided by t2 now what uh, some common terms will be there that means n2 will be here n2 will be here yeah, t2 t2 will be there this n2 n2 will cancel here t2 t2 will be cancel here so what remains here n1 divided by n3 is equal to t3 divided by t1 so simply this n1 divided by n3 is equal to t3 divided by t1 this n1 is nothing but what driver gear speed of the driver gear and this n3 is equal to what speed of the driven gear is equal to this T three T three is nothing but what the number of teeth on the driven gear and T one is equal to the number of teeth on the driver gear. Okay, so simply we can see this is what simply we can state it from this equation that is what speed ratio. The speed ratio is equal to what speed of the driver divided by speed of driven. The speed of driver divided by speed speed of driven is equal to this speed ratio is equal to what in terms of Uh, speed and in terms of number of teeth okay the speed ratio is equal to what number speed of the driver divided by speed of driven is equal to what number of teeth on the driver driven divided by number of teeth on the driver that means the speed is what inversely proportional to number of teeth okay so this comes like that okay so similarly we can say here the train value this train value is what exactly reciprocal of this speed ratio the train value is equal to what speed of the driven divided by speed of driver is equal to what number of teeth on the driver divided by number of teeth on the driven this train value is what exactly reciprocal of the speed ratio similarly it can be provided that above equation holds good even if the 
there are any number of intermediate gears that means this uh, what equation will be hold good okay if there are number of intermediate gears the number of gears intermediate gears we can use then the equation will be the uh, holds very good okay that means this equation will be suitable from above we can see that the speed ratio and train value in a simple train of gears is independent of size and number of intermediate intermediate gears from the above equation we can state or we can say that the train value or speed ratio in a simple gear train is independent this is what independent total independent of size and number of intermediate gears that means the uh, intermediate gear, gear does not affect on the speed ratio and train value of the this simple gear train these intermediate gears are called idler gears okay Ide, idler or idle gears okay as they do not affect the speed ratio and train value of the system okay the idle gears are used the following two processes purposes first purpose is that to connect gears where the last center distance is required where the last center distance is required in that case we have to uh, we have to what manufacturing the last size of gear and this is what uh, unconvenient or uneconomical un in that case we can choose the idler gears okay that means to connect the gears where large distance is required and second that is what to obtain the desired direction of motion of the driver driven gear that is what clockwise or anti clockwise suppose we want to uh, we want the motion of this driven or the sense of the driven gear is clockwise then we can use uh, this idler gears as per sense that means we have to uh, suppose you want the uh, sense of the driver and driven will be same then we can use the intermediate gears uh, that is what odd size okay suppose we want the driver and driven gear sense rotation of sense will be the different then we can uh, opposite then we can use the even number of idler gears so this is what the simple gear train this is what types of uh, what is what gear train in this video we can we seen that the gear train the introduction of gear train then types of gear train and again simple gear train okay thanks for watching this video uh, subscribe my youtube channel and click on bell icon so you will get the more videos related to theory of motion uh, to and in this video in this channel you can see the educational videos so uh, please stay connected. Thank you.